Uh, my name is Ivan Maxvini. I'm a speech and language therapist, and I'm going to be giving you a demonstration of an assessment of oropharyngeal swallow function. So it's a typical clinical bedside assessment. Hi, Mr. Humphreys. Hi, how are you doing? I'm going to ha um, have a look at your swallow function today, yeah. and see how you're getting on with, with eating and drinking. If you're having any difficulties at all, yeah. are you finding you're having any problems eating anything in particular? Yeah, biscuits or crisps or anything like that. And what's happening when you're eating those? I'm getting stuck on my throat. Okay. Okay, so you're getting a, a choking sensation. Yeah, I've had a cough. Okay. Have you had many chest infections? No. 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 Okay. Do you get much eyes watering or anything like that when you're eating or drinking? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. Um, I'm also going to use some pulse oximetry um, with Mr. Humphreys, which um, can be useful for uh, if there's a drop of more than 2% in pulse oximetry, it may be an indication of um, aspiration because not all aspiration is overt. So you don't always get um, a patient response for aspiration. So I'm going to start off the assessment um, by uh, having a look at um, Michael's or um, or a motor function. Um, so I'm just going to assess here the the muscles of your face. All right. So first of all, I'm going to get you to open your jaw against my hand. Very good. Move it left and right. So a little bit of reduced jaw movement there. Okay. So indicating some cranial nerve five involvement. Um, okay. Can you puff out your cheeks for me? Hold the air in them. Okay. And a bit more. A bit more like this really fill them with air. So a little bit of decreased buccal tone there. Um, can you hold this between your lips for me? And as hard as you can, really holding it. So Michael's having a little bit of difficulty holding this between his lips, so indicating there's a little bit of cranial nerve seven involvement there as well, okay. Um, can you stick out your tongue for me? Very good. And can you move it left to right? Very good, and quickly, as fast as you can go, and move it up and down. Very good, excellent range of tongue movement there. And can you say ah for me? Uh, okay, uh. so I'm having a look to see um, if how his palate, soft palate function is and it's normal. Um, I also would like you to wrinkle your brow for me, so as if you got a big surprise. Very good, and frown for me. Very good. Okay, and can you close your eyes and open them again? Very good. And um, can you give me a cough? <coughs> Okay, so we can see from this, Michael has a little bit of a reduced uh, strength of his cough, which um, will have implications in terms of swallow function in the sense that um, when he's swallowing a drink, he may not be able to clear um, anything that goes down the wrong way or that is actually, in fact, aspirated. Um, okay, um, can you say pup, 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 Good, and tut, 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 Okay, and put a cup, put a cup, put a cup, put a cup. Okay, good. So Michael has a little bit of slight um, imprecise articulation, okay, so maybe ind indicating a very mild dysarthria. Okay, that's great. Next, um, we're going to give you, I'm going to give you a little bit to eat and drink. So we'll start off with a semi solid consistency. So we just use yogurt um, for this. Okay, Michael, I'll give that to you. Okay, so you just take a normal spoon of that for me, Michael. I'm going to be feeling for laryngeal elevation and tongue movement. So Michael has multiple swallows per bolus. So it's indicating that his swallow is, is quite effortful. So he's already taken five swallows. <coughs> okay, so um, just don't take anything for another minute. Um, this may be indicating that th this weak cough response may be indicating that um, Michael has aspirated a little bit of this semi-solid consistency. He also had uh, reduced laryngeal elevation, so that would fit with, if the larynx isn't elevating properly, little um, small amounts of the food bolus may be slipping down into the airway instead of down into his esophagus. And the fact that he can't actually clear the bolus fully um, is also going to have impl implications for our management. So just take another bit there for me, Michael. So he's gone down 1% on the pulse oximetry. So it's just keeping an eye on that as well. Now he's gone down 2%. So that may be an indication that there is some silent aspiration, in fact, happening. Good. Is that all gone? Yeah. Okay. Have another one for me. 
I'm going to have a listen um, with the stethoscope, and this is what we call cervical auscultation. It just gives us another bit of added information about um, audible swallow sounds. Michael's a little bit short of breath now, and he's gone down another further 2% on the pulse oximetry. <coughs> and I could also hear some audible residue um, there. Okay, I think that's enough for that one. Can you give me a strong cough, please, Michael? <coughs> so I'm getting him to try and cough to clear any residue that, that may be hanging around. Okay, we're going to try you on a, on a, a syrup consistency. Um, when we're doing speech and language therapy assessments, we use very particular consistency. So we use soft custard syrup and regular fluid. Um, and these are standardized. So we make them up per 200 mils, two scoops of, of thickener per 200 mils, so that every time we make up a syrup consistency, that it's the same. OK, have a little bit of that for me, Michael. Very good. Four swallows. What are you feeling? Some still there. Okay. So the fact that Michael's feeling something that's still maybe there in his throat, that means um, that there may be some residue in his pharynx. Because Michael has some reduced tongue movement, there may be residue in his molecular spaces because that would be typical if there's reduced um, tongue movement and then also maybe some in his, in his piriforms. Have another little bit for me, Michael. But um, we would need to assess for video fluoroscopy. Um, we need to assess by video fluoroscopy to have a look at residue. And if you also note, Michael just desaturated there to 94%. So that may be indicative, it's very likely that that's indicative of a slight amount of silent aspiration. How does that feel? Sorry, okay, have another little bit for me. He went down to 95 there again. So there is no patient response, so that, that would indicate that it's silent. However, he's, got, he's desaturating, so that would be concerning in, in terms of the fact that he's not responding, but that there there is obviously some, now there is a patient response, so he's throat clearing, <coughs> leading to a cough, and he's desaturated to 95%. So that would indicate that he is possibly aspirating on this consistency. Okay, I think that's enough for that. We're going to try Michael on something a little bit thinner. Um, so just a regular fluid. Okay, when you're ready. Again, I'm feeling for tongue movement and laryngeal elevation. Good. Immediate throat clear. <coughs> Indicative of aspiration. <coughs> okay. Give me a really good strong cough as strong as you can. <coughs> okay. And the eyes are actually watering as well, which is another sign of aspiration. Okay, you okay? Yeah, is there anything still there? A little bit. Can you give me another? Can you just try and do a dry swallow for me? That's just to see if there's any residue left in the pharynx. We're trying to just clear it with a dry swallow. Yeah, no problem. Okay now? Great. Okay. We're going to finally give Michael a little bit of biscuit. So the assessment aims to be as um, as thorough in terms of consistencies to represent what he may be eating at home. Let's just have a little bit of that for me. One percent desaturation. Okay, is it stuck? Yeah. So we're going to do a liquid wash with Michael. Sometimes patients, um, when food's getting stuck, it's good to try and wash it down with the liquid. <coughs> Doing really well, Michael.
still there? <coughs> Give me a really strong cough before you take the rest of that. <coughs> okay, and another one. I'm going to get you a tissue. Okay, if you need to spit anything out into that, do. <coughs> better and sat there back up to 99% now that that's cleared. Okay, well done. Okay, so um, with Michael we can see he was having difficulties on, on quite a lot of the consistencies so small amount of difficulty on soft which was the yogurt, um, difficulty on syrup and regular fluid so there was overt signs of aspiration as well as signs of silent aspiration. Um, so in Michael's case, we would want to do an objective assessment, so either a video fluoroscopy or a fiber endoscopic examination of the swallow, which we call a fees, to determine um, objectively what consistencies is he safe for and what ones are causing him difficulty and if there is in fact um, aspiration, exactly how much aspiration and also to have a look at possible residue in the pharynx because you're complaining of the sensation of feeling, stuck getting, feeling yeah. food getting stuck. Yeah. No, a certain kind of food gets stuck and it's, no, it, it gets stuck and you feel like you're choking and mm -hmm. you start coughing. It's very embarrassing if you're out with the yeah. brain drying, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I, I do understand that that's obviously not very pleasant. No, no, because no, um, I was out uh, a few months ago and I went for a meal and I went for a, a you know, I had steak. Yeah. And I got stuck with and I got sick all over the whole restaurant and it was so okay. embarrassed. So that's horrible for you to happen but it's also sort of demonstrating yeah. to me that maybe you've been having yeah. swallowing difficulties quite yeah, a, for know, quite a while. I know, I watch why it's sort of mm. watch why I'm roaring, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not too bad at home and you know, your parents but it's so embarrassing in front of people. Yeah and you see that might indicate to me you've been having a bit of difficulty for a while haven't yeah, you? Yeah. 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 What are the foods out of these what were the ones that you found the easiest to have? Uh, the syrup. Mm -hmm. The syrupy drink yeah. and the yogurt. Yeah. Um, Often people will start restricting their own diet, so they may stop eating meat, they may stop eating crumbly foods, biscuits, toast, um, because they're feeling it's getting stuck or going down the wrong way. So obviously that's a sort of a red flag in terms of if a patient's presenting to you um, and you thinking, okay, something's maybe not quite right with their swallow, or if they're complaining of choking a lot or choking and then the food coming back up. That would sound like maybe re a problem with residue, so we would definitely want to look at that under video fluoroscopy because that's the very best way that we'll be able to determine exactly how, where the residue is and how much residue there actually is. Yeah, quite a problem with fresh bread. Okay, because sometimes that can be quite dry. Yeah. And then even if moistened, it can actually just bulk up and get maybe stuck in, in the pharynx. Yeah, no, it's all, it's mm. all stuck to here, you know, mm -hmm. fresh bread. And Brilliant. Thanks very much, no Michael. Problem. We've subsequently done a video fluoroscopy um, on Michael, and he was found to have silent aspiration on regular fluids and um, considerable residue on soft consistency. So he's going to require a liquid wash, but he's also going to be restricted to syrup consistency fluids instead of regular fluids. So now we've made the appropriate recommendations for Michael's diet so that he is not at risk for aspiration. Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate what's known as the water swallow test. Um, it can be very useful for people out in GP clinics, nurses, and it's very useful and used um, regularly here in our accident and emergency department. Um, basically, a patient is assessed on 50 mils of water, and if they show any signs of difficulty, coughing, eyes watering, um, shortness of breath or any other signs of aspiration, they are then subsequently referred to speech and language therapy for a full or a pharyngeal assessment of swallow. So I'm going to give uh, Mr. Humphreys here the 50 mils of water and then just, just observe how he manages with that. That's enough. So he's now throat clearing, very subtly, but it's there. <coughs> and now a cough response. So if somebody presented um, 
on the water swallow test with that kind of response, that would be very indicative that they would need then subsequent referral to speech and language therapy for a full assessment.